In this video, I'd like to talk about the concepts of exponential growth and decay. And before we look at any example problems, let's talk about these concepts in general. And for that, let's look at some specific examples. So let's say we have the equation y is equal to 2 to the x power. And this is what's going to be an example of exponential growth. And to get an idea of an equation, or really a function, of this type, we're going to want to make a table. So let's pick different x values and see what their y values will be. And if we plug in 0, remember, anything to the 0 power is always equal to 1. So 2 to the 0 is 1. If we plug in 1, we get 2 to the first power, which is 2. If we plug in 2, we get 2 squared, or 2 times 2, which is 4. But we can also look at fractional values or negative values. Let's put in negative 1. So that's 2 to the minus 1, meaning we are dividing by 2 one time. So that will be 1 half. If we plug in minus 2, that will be 2 to the minus 2, or divide by 2 twice, which is 1 fourth, and so on. But with these points, we should be able to get a pretty clear pattern of what's going on. So if we plug in the point 0, 1 right there at 1, comma 2, at 2, comma 4, if we did 3, it'd be all the way up off the screen at 8. And if we do negative 1, we know we're at a half. And if we do negative 2, we're at a fourth. So let me draw in this curve. And you can get a general idea of what this looks like. Notice that as the x values get more and more negative, we're just dividing by 2 more and more times, but this is never going to cross 0. And so this is actually what we call an asymptote here. It's a boundary that the function won't cross. And as the x values get bigger and bigger, their y values, or the function values, grow very quickly. Exponential functions grow quicker than all the polynomial functions. So this is exponential growth. But if we want an example of exponential decay, let's look at another function. So we'll say g of x, that's going to be our y value, is equal to 1 half to the x power. So again, this is what we're going to call exponential decay. And we're going to approach it the same way. We're going to make a table here and look at different x values and what their y values would be or what the function values will be. So let's just use the same x values. We'll do 0, 1, 2, but we'll also look at a couple negative values. And 1 half to the 0 power is 1, since anything to the 0 power is 1. 1 half to the first power is just a half. 1 half squared, if you multiply a half by a half, you get 1 fourth. And if we plug in negative 1, then you're dividing by 1 half one time. So 1 divided by a half is really just 2. Or with the negative exponent, you could think that with exponent properties, you can flip the fraction and make it a positive exponent. So it'd be 2 over 1 to the first power, or just 2. And if we plug in negative 2, so now we're dividing by a half twice, which is really dividing by 1 fourth, and 1 divided by a fourth is 4. But again, you can think of the negative exponent flipping the fraction to 2 over 1 and becoming a positive exponent. So 2 over 1 squared, which again is just 4. So let's plot these points. Goes through at 0, 1, just like our growth function. Goes through at 1, 1 half. At 2, 1 fourth. If we did 3, it would go through at 1 eighth. If we do minus 1, it goes through at 2. And at minus 2, it goes through 4. If we did minus 3, it would actually go through at 8 for the y value. So let's draw this curve in. So you can see the blue curve. That's our g of x. That's our exponential decay function. And the orange curve, f of x, that's our growth function. And I chose these bases for the exponential functions such that we would get this symmetry here. We have 2 and we have 1 half. In fact, if you really wanted to with this blue function here, g of x, you could rewrite this 1 half or 1 over 2 to the first. You're dividing by 2 once 
as 2 to the minus 1 to the x power. And then using exponent properties, an exponent to an exponent, you just multiply. So you get 2 to the minus x. So they're very similar functions. One just has a negative exponent, one has a positive exponent. Or notice that with the decay function, when it's written as a fraction, the base is a fraction, whereas in growth, the base is greater than 1. And so that will generally be the case. So we can write that when you have some function, we'll call it h of x, is a to the x power for growth, a is going to be bigger than 1. And for decay, let's say we have k of x is a to the x, then in this case, a is going to have to be a fraction. It will be between 0 and 1. So when we go back and look at our example problems, we're basically just going to be looking at the base. Is the base going to be a fraction or will it be a number greater than 1? Or another way to look at it is as the x values increase, is your function value getting smaller, which is decay, or is it getting larger, which is growth? So with all this in mind, let's now look at some example problems.